If you search on Google for Jeffrey Dahmer, you will see that he is also known as the Milwaukee Cannibal or the Milwaukee Monster. Jeffrey Lionel Dahmer was an American serial killer and sex offender who was found guilty of committing the murder and dismemberment of 17 men and boys. All this was between the years of 1978 and 1991. Most recently, there was some information that was released and it is truly terrifying. Today, we will look at the 10 most shocking facts about Jeffrey Dahmer that you probably didn't know. Before you go on, let me warn you that there will be gory and graphic details as you move on. And with that, let's move on. His inspiration came from his father. I know you are probably wondering, what kind of father would do this? Well, let's just say that it was unintentional. Jeffrey's father, Lionel Dahmer, was a talented chemist who also worked as a senior research chemist. Even though Lionel was a very busy man and a terrible husband to his then wife, he would sometimes teach young Jeffrey how to dissect roadkill, such as possums, raccoons, and other dead animals. Since Jeffrey was still young when he was being taught all this, he became fascinated with animal dissections, their internal organs, and even their bones. It is said that he would play fiddlesticks with animal bones. He would even learn about taxidermy, which is the art of stuffing animals' insides to make them look lifelike. However, when his father was teaching his son all of this, he thought he was teaching him to follow his passion. However, Jeff decided to use these skills on his victims instead. However, it is worth noting that Lionel loved his son till the end, and he was even by his side when he died on November 28, 1994. Jeff's first victim was literally his fantasy. According to Jeff, his first murder was in his father's house in Ohio. However, he later told the police that the murder of Stephen Hicks, an 18-year-old boy who took a ride in Dahmer's car to hitchhike to a concert, was an accident. Jeff told the police that since he was a loner and a homosexual guy, he would have fantasies about young boys. In one of them, he meets a total stranger on the road who stops Dahmer for a hitchhiking ride, and they end up spending a good time together. All he was afraid of was of them leaving, as his parents did. Everything was going well until the hitchhiker asked Dahmer to drop him off at his destination before it was too late. However, when Jeff requested for him to stay longer, things got tense between the two 18-year-olds. Eventually, Dahmer reacted by hitting him on the head with a barbell. When Hicks was tending to his head injury, Jeff strangled the boy with a longer dumbbell. Jeff, who was staying alone at his father's house, hid the body under the house where he and his father found the first roadkill. He later cut the body into pieces and tried smashing the bones, but they could not be because of the wet interiors of the human skeleton. He ended up frying the bones in the oven until they were fragile enough to break easily. He then scattered the bone dust all over his backyard. He said that doing this would always keep Hicks closer to him. Origin of doing a Dahmer When Dahmer was in school, he was a social outcast. He was often ignored by the popular students on campus. When one of Jeff's school friends wrote a graphic novel about him titled My Friend Dahmer, he revealed in his book that Jeffrey became the school clown for doing a Dahmer. But what is this? It is said that doing a Dahmer is pulling a practical joke on someone to prank them. Jeff would entertain other students by mimicking autistic individuals when he was in school. The phrase became well known after it was used in the novel Jeffrey Dahmer by Joel Norris in 1992. However, when Dahmer was convicted for the murders and dismembering of 17 young men, the meaning completely changed and it is only associated with his heinous crimes. How racism and negligence contributed to Dahmer's crimes. In the late 80s, racism and colorism were prevalent in society, and in some ways, this contributed to Dahmer's crimes. If only the police had listened to a black woman, Glenda Cleveland, who lived next door to Dahmer's apartment in Milwaukee, Cleveland had complained to the police multiple times about electrical tool noises, screaming, and even disgusting smells coming from Dahmer's apartment. And at this time, Dahmer had kept a 14-year-old boy in a vegetative state 
by drilling a hole in his skull. But one day, the boy, Conorak Synthamsophone, managed to escape from Dahmer's room when he was out to get alcohol. Eventually, Cleveland, her daughter, and one of her cousins found the boy outside Dahmer's apartment. He was found naked, mummering unidentifiable words and bleeding from his head. The woman called the cops, and when the cops came, the boy was still in the same situation. Dahmer eventually found the cops and handled the situation as though he was ready for it. He told the cops that Conorak, his boyfriend, drank too much, fell down, and hurt himself. Even though Glenda and her daughter complained a lot, the police believed Dahmer and even helped him take his victim inside. Interestingly, when the officers entered Dahmer's flat, there was a dead body beside Jeff's bed. If only the police had listened to Glenda's complaints and investigated a little, they could have prevented five more murders. There were human remains in every utensil in Dahmer's apartment. When Dahmer was finally arrested on July 22, 1991, the police found human remains in almost every utensil in his apartment. The term Milwaukee cannibal was used for a reason. Apparently, after killing his victims, Jeff would take out their internal organs, remove the flesh from their bones, and consume them. According to the serial killer, he said that he ate his victims because it made him feel as though they were part of him. After Dahmer was arrested, the police found the severed head of Conorak synthesomophone and the internal organs of others in Dahmer's refrigerator. Not only that, but they found multiple bottles of hydrochloric acid, a large canister that Dahmer used to melt the flesh in the acid, and several skulls. Jeff had painted most of the skulls to make them look like artifacts. Even though he had multiple mental disorders, Dahmer was declared legally sane for his crimes. After he was arrested in 1991, Dahmer was found with multiple mental diseases, some of them being schizotypal personality disorder, borderline personality disorder, and psychotic disorder. He was also found to have something called spanchnophilia, which is a mental disorder that causes the person to be aroused by flesh and bones. Given these discoveries, Dahmer's attorney and father tried to plead guilty to insanity in Dahmer's case. Lionel loved his son so much that he never wanted him to serve jail time. However, the case was ruled against them and the judge declared Dahmer legally sane and understood what he was doing to his victims. He was sentenced to 15 terms of life imprisonment on February 17, 1992. Dahmer helped in finding the bodies of his victims. After his arrest, Dahmer went on to help the Milwaukee police discover his victims' dead bodies, which he had buried or hidden somewhere. He even confessed to killing Stephen Hicks, something the police had no idea about. Dahmer confessed that after his first murder in 1978, he remained panicked for more than a year. He said that he felt scared every time he heard a cop car. He also said that he even kept an eye on the news to see whether they would report the disappearance of Hicks. However, given that that never happened, he was even more motivated to commit such crimes in the future. Nonetheless, Dahmer committed his second murder nine years after his first. After killing his second victim, Stephen Tuami, in a hotel room, Dahmer went on a killing spree, targeting needy and homosexual individuals each week. He confessed to the police about each of his killings, stating that for what I did, I should be dead. Dahmer was neglected and ignored in his childhood and teenage years. The negligence of his parents played a big part in his psyche and personality over the years. His father and mother would always prioritize their work and domestic issues over Dahmer's needs. Growing up, Dahmer was an introverted kid, keeping his thoughts to himself most of the time. When he realized his homosexuality during his teenage years, he tried to talk to his father about it, only to be ignored. When Jeff's mother was pregnant with him, it is said that she took a lot of pills for stress, depression, and other mental issues that she had at the time. It is said that this might have contributed to Dahmer's twisted psyche and mental disorders. One Escape On July 22, 1991, Jeff lured a black man, Tracy Edwards, with money from a nearby club to his apartment. 
However, when Edwards got to Dahmer's apartment, he found lots of hydrochloric acid bottles lying around, and there was some weird smell all over the apartment. Dahmer had even put a handcuff on one of Tracy's hands. At this point, Tracy sensed something was wrong, and he tried to escape. Jeff would not let him leave, even holding him at knife point. It is said that Dahmer even told him that he wanted to hear his heartbeat before eating it. Tracy, who was 32 years old, knew exactly how to handle Dahmer, who was already high on alcohol. He assured Dahmer that he wouldn't leave and even started posing for pictures. When he got the chance, Tracy hit Dahmer in the face and managed to escape the house with a handcuff dangling from one of his hands. He ran through the streets until he found a police patrol car. He then led the cops to Dahmer's apartment, and this is where it was discovered what he had done. The police found lots of Polaroid images of mutilated bodies in the drawer. He was immediately arrested, and Tracy Edwards was declared a hero. The youngest Dahmer changed his name and disappeared. For some time, Jeff's younger brother got a bit of attention after his brother was arrested. Jeff had a brother who was six years younger. In fact, it is said that Jeff was the one who named his brother when he was born. However, after Jeff's crimes were discovered in 1991 and he was convicted, David Dahmer, the youngest Dahmer, changed his name and disappeared from the public. It has been reported that David graduated from the University of Cincinnati, Ohio and has a stable career. According to the father, David legally changed his name and didn't even bother to show up for his brother's case. These are some of the most horrifying facts about the Milwaukee cannibal. Let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.